Okay, welcome everyone. Rod Moore here. We're just about to get started, so uh, grab yourself a cuppa and we'll be underway any moment now. Thank you all for joining us for today's live stream. Welcome, welcome. Good morning and welcome everyone. Just getting set up and uh, giving a moment for people to come and join us live. So uh, while we wait, please let us know whereabouts in the world you are tuning in from and uh, what time of day it is there. And we'll be underway in just one moment. It looks like we've got <coughs> Facebook coming on now. Welcome to everyone on Facebook and YouTube. Great to see you all again. About to get underway, so just let us know whereabouts you are in the world. Good morning, Misty. How are you? In Texas, I think you were, Misty. From memory. Good morning, Janet. Hey, Nan. How are you? Uh, let me have a look here. Good morning. How is everyone? Thank you all for joining me once again. Hey, Tracy. Welcome. Just update my uh, screen here. There we go. That's better. So I know what's going on. Welcome, welcome. Nan's in Mississippi. Fantastic. And Wolfcat, good morning. Yes, Wolfcat, I absolutely agree. The uh, We've woken up this morning to the news at Notre Dame have burnt down and it was just a real reminder to me that um, when you're given opportunities in life you should grasp them. I was in Paris in 2012 and I wanted to go to Notre Dame and I didn't so uh, you know huge mistake but what a tragedy what a tragedy. Um, that's just happened in the last few hours John. Um, it's been all over Facebook news and stuff. G'day GB name Namveda in Richmond welcome. Welcome, welcome Barbara in the USA. Which part of the USA are you in? 703, so I'm tipping that it's going to be East Coast possibly. Wolfcat in the UK, midnight there. Thank you for joining us at such a late hour. And what about over on Facebook? Where is everyone on Facebook? Just having a cuppa, getting, getting the uh, system going. <laughs> Tracy in Nelson Bay. Welcome back, Tracy. Good to see you. Well, we're going to finish off where we left off the other day. Um, you may recall, for those who joined us, we were working on this one here. And we got a little bit of the way into it. And then my live stream dropped out. However, I think I've fixed the issue with the live stream. So we shouldn't have a problem with that in the future. Um, or if we do, I'll know how to fix it anyway. So we'll be able to get it back up and running straight away. So... We'll have another go at this one. Um, and just while we're waiting for people to join us, uh, let me come back here. This is the one that we did in this week's um, Learn to Paint TV show. Got to watch the lights there. Um, fun little painting, little sort of uh, scene inspired by traveling through Wales. Uh, hope you've all seen that one. And we'll get rid of that one there. Okay. So we're going to need paint. That's going to be a good starting point, I think, for us. And uh, it's your birthday. Happy birthday, Misty. Happy you've had a lovely day. I really do. And um, what a fun way to spend your birthday. Painting. <laughs> good for you. Happy birthday. Uh, so what we're going to need is paint. Let me get some paint out here. 
come down to our palette. Let me find out where we can pop this paint. Um, right about there. So French ultramarine blue. I'm not going to pull any surprises here today. It's all going to be pretty stock standard. Permanent alizarin crimson. And... Should we do some giveaways today? What do you think? I'm thinking about giving away a mouse mat and uh, an art bag. What do you reckon? Would that be of interest to you? Well, actually, I, it, let me know. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, do you think the art bag should go to Facebook or YouTube? Depending on which one you're on, I guess would make the difference there. Um, the art bags seem to be really popular, so... Uh, Very pretty eggy. I'm not sure what you mean there, Nan. Uh, Christy in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Welcome, 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 Mexico. So, should we give the art bag away on Facebook or on YouTube today, do you think? That is a big question, isn't it? <laughs> One of life's big questions. Right, and some white paint, some white paint. So these are the Artilia Interactive Paints. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you've seen me use these. There's a bit of white paint for us. And I'll get that scraper out of the way. I've been using these big scrapers and things for uh, the course that we've currently got running, which is the Loose, Bold and Expressive course. Oh, and for those of you who don't know who I am, I should really introduce myself. My name's Rod Moore. This is the Learn to Paint Live with Rod show. And um, we teach people who are getting started how to paint, basically, which is pretty exciting stuff. So that's me there. I'll come back to that in a bit now. Let me just double check. Are we going to give the art bag away on Facebook? For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you briefly. So I've been giving away limited edition Learn to Paint merchandise. So this is the art bag. Put all your art supplies stuff in there when you go out painting or you go to the art store. That's the uh, art bag. So I'm going to give one of those away today at the end of the show. And this is the limited edition mouse mat. And we'll give one of those away as well. And uh, that way you'll uh, be able to paint in style. So let me just scan down here. All right, Tracy says we should give the art bag on Facebook. So done. Somebody on Facebook is going to win the art bag. Cool bananas. Which means the mouse mat's going to go to YouTube. And when we build up our following on uh, Twitch and Periscope, because we're streaming to four different platforms today, we're streaming to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Periscope. So welcome to Twitch and Periscope. When we build up our audience there, we will um, do giveaways on there as well. What does everyone think about cardstock paper to practice? Thank you, Rod. This will be my fourth painting today. So I'm very happy. Terrific. Um, cardstock, I think if you're using acrylics or oils, I'd be putting down a coat of gesso on, on the cardstock. And I, you have to get some fairly thick cardstock to take that. Um, Nancy, welcome in Dallas. Welcome. We are neighbours. We've got a couple of people dialing in from, from, uh, from Texas. Alrighty. We've got French ultramarine blue, we've got the alizarin crimson, we've got yellow ochre, I've got cadmium yellow light, I think it is, and I've got titanium white. So what we want to do is we want to pick up this painting here, where we left it off. Let me just show it to you. Where we left it off, and we want to just continue on with it. And I'm thinking we're going to spend most of our time is working on the tree here and this row of trees through here and bringing up this foreground. So my idea was, if you recall, that I was going to put a little dam in here reflecting the colours of the sky. And, um, you know, maybe we might put a couple of sheep there and some fence posts. And we might even, I was thinking maybe a little moon around right about there, because it is a sort of a dusky feel. Put a moon there and we'll reflect that in the water. So, but I'm going to leave that up to you guys. What do you think? Do we put in moon, uh, a moon in there and make it into a sort of a twilighty uh, scene? If you think so, then just type moon in. Um, and we will put a moon in. All right. But for the moment, I'm going to work on 
our trees here. So let's come down and get that started. So I've got a big brush. Let's not be shy. Nice big brush. And I'll, I'll get back to that dark because that dark's a little bit thin on there. So I'll just mix up our blue and our red. Maybe a touch of the yellow. Why not? A little bit of the yellow. Oh, that's a lot of yellow. Okay. Just add more blue into it. Okay. And then we'll just go back to that bit of red there. And let's just test that. It's, that's not bad. So what I'll do, I'll just... It's a little bit thin, so I'll just fill it in. Work up to the edges there. And uh, so that's a big question, moon or no moon? And I'm thinking, because I think I might have talked when we were doing this the other day, I think I may have mentioned one of my favorite artists is Dennis Sheehan, and he sort of starts off a painting very loosely, just random out of control brush marks, and then he starts to turn it into trees and things. But he does these fabulous twilight sort of scenes um, with moons in them, and I, and I just love them. I think he's wonderful. Okay. So the question of the day is, do we pop a little moon in? And, and the reason why I'm thinking moon is because we've got this dam that we're going to work on here, and that dam just lends itself to a little bit of a reflection of some light in there, don't you think? Um, be a shame to waste it. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, just strengthen up that paint in there. Now that sky is not looking too bad. I could adjust it. I'm not going to touch the sky until uh, the very end. So um, I will hold off on um, on that. G'day, Colin. Colin says moon. Yep. Tracy says no moon. Okay. Colin says moon. Nan says yes to the moon. I think you might be outvoted here, Tracy. Uh, Nancy, yep, moon. Misty, I think responding to another conversation. Misty says moon. GB Namveda, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, says moon. So moon's winning at the moment. So it's all good. We haven't got there yet. Let's... Um, what I'll do, I'll just cool that tone down a little, and I'll, maybe I'll lighten it a little with just a touch of white in there. And I want to downplay these like little hillside uh, trees here a little. Now, unfortunately, because of Easter coming up, and... I've got an exhibition on over the weekend, over the Easter break, which I have to prepare for. So we're not going to, this is going to be the only live stream we'll do this week, unfortunately. Uh, see how that, I've just lightened and cooled that tone down. Can you see how that sort of sits, bit, it's, it's very subtle, and maybe I don't know if the lights in the video are picking it up, right? Um, but it's just sitting further back than this main tree. And that's what you want. You don't want to have everything the same tone, same value, and so on. G'day, Heather. On the Gold Coast. Awesome. Love going to the Gold Coast. And um, beautiful part of the world there. I'm actually going to do a painting of burly heads uh, in the next day or two. So welcome. You're saying go with the moon. Trace is okay with the moon. Awesome. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So hopefully you can see that in those trees there, that that's um, very subtly sort of sitting in the back and we're getting sort of really soft edges in there. So we get a very subtle effect is what I'm going for. So I'm going for a bolder effect here, far more subtle in the background there, okay? Now I'll just pop that in there. Go for a slightly smaller brush. Let's get a mud color. Anyone know how to mix mud? <laughs> I think most of us know how. Well, most of us can mix mud when we don't want to mix mud, right? <laughs> um, but how do you consciously mix mud? Well, it's an orange that's just sort of toned off, isn't it? Depending on where you are. Depending on where you are. But certainly in Australia, 
better be careful I don't put my brush in my coffee, cup of tea there. In Australia, um, it's going to be a really ready earth tone, but I'll just add a bit of blue into that. See how that just goes on the brown side there? I'll make it a bit warmer, a bit more yellow. Let's test that. I just want to get some muddy sort of embankment in there. Because, uh, you know, a good dam is going to have some mud there. Something like that. Get a little touch lighter. Add a little bit of highlight onto it. Okay. So we look at our sky, we've got pink, we've got yellow, and we've got blue in there. So let's get some pink. And let's just get some of that in here. We've got yellow, which, anyone remember how we mixed the yellow? I think it was a bit of cad yellow in there. Some white. So I'll just connect those two together. And then we've got blue on the blue and the white. Okay, I'll just run that in the bottom here. Hmm. Now, there's something I don't like about the um <laughs> Uh, there's something I don't like about the shape of the dam. <laughs> All true artists dip their brushes in their coffees. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> uh, the dam. I, mm, I'm thinking maybe I need to push it out through here a bit more. Uh, like through there. Let me just widen it out through there. Just open it up a little bit. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's going to be better. So I'll just get a little touch of that mud and we'll just add a little bit of that into there. Just needed opening up. I thought it was a bit too crowded. And let's get some work into that grass. Into that grass. Okay. Is everyone still with me? Or have we dropped out? No, I think we're still, still going okay. Hey Lily, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Nan. We're getting there slowly. Okay, I think, did I have, I, know, I think I had phthalo green last time, however, I think it may have died, so not to worry. We'll mix up our green. So we'll take some blue, some yellow ochre, see what that gets. That's always a bit of an olivey green. But you can always add a little cadmium yellow just to spice it up a bit. Give it a bit more punch. A little tiny pinhead of red in there. And let's have a look. Flick up some grasses in front of those shadows there.
I'm really just um, exploring here. I don't really have a definite plan in mind. Whereas if you follow me, you'll know that usually I'm using a, some sort of reference photo and so on. But uh, sometimes it's good just to, um, you know, just do what feels good on the day. And so that's what we're doing here with this painting. Completely from imagination, and the imagination is happening right before your very eyes. The creative process at work. to just lighten up a little bit here now. So we need a question for our giveaway here today. Somebody on Facebook is going to win the art bag. Somebody on YouTube is going to win the mouse mat. So we need a good question. Yeah, thanks, Colin. I like those as well, those colours in the water there. A um, little bit different from how you'd normally see water painted. G'day, Jen. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, Della. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you joining us here today. Let's get a little bit of warmth happening into this mix here. Okay, I've got a question for you. This is not for our giveaway, but I would, just doing market research more than anything. Do you buy DVDs or are DVDs dead? <laughs> are we long past the era of DVDs? That's a question for you. Who here still buys DVDs? I still... I've bought tons of art, and I'm talking about art painting DVDs, not your favourite movies. Um, I still, uh, well, I don't buy the DVD. I always look if they've got a downloadable or an online version, then I buy those, obviously. Um, but not DVDs so much, although about a year ago I did buy some DVDs by a very good Australian artist because he didn't have a download option. But it's not my preference. But what about you guys? Are you buying... Uh, painting DVDs still or do you think the days of that are, are long gone and you prefer the online approach be interested to hear Della from Canada welcome Della Alberta we get a lot of Canadians so great to have you Christy do not buy DVDs neither does Nan okay that seems John still likes DVDs. Okay, good. Kathy's asking, is this from a photo? This is 100% made up, Kathy. I, um, when we started this one, I worked from the point of view that we were just going to make up a painting. Um, so we're making it up, totally. Barbara doesn't buy them. John likes DVDs. Wolfcat, I still buy DVDs in the UK. They're often cheaper than downloads. That's interesting. Um, and in the UK, you've got a couple of really good distributors and producers of art DVDs. You've got Townhouse and you've got APV. Um, APV tend to like the Australian artists, uh, but also some very good UK artists. And I've bought a ton of both APV and um, Town, I think it's Townhouse, a um, ton of the DVDs over the years from those guys. Um, but... I think APV in particular now have the online version for most of their, so I'm buying those. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm constantly looking to learn to paint. I don't think I've got it worked out. Uh, even though we teach beginners, you know, I'm looking to take my painting to a whole new level myself. So I'm always investing in education 
materials. And I think it's a matter of knowing what's the right thing for you at the time, isn't it? Um, that's the key. Some cattails on the edge of the pond. I'm not entirely sure what cattails are, but maybe if you mean like reeds and things. Misty, yep, I agree. Not sure you buy DVDs. Um, I, as I said, I, the last time I bought DVDs were from an Australian um, artist um, who I don't think he has anything online. So, Cole, Colin prefers the online version. Without online, I would never have heard of you in Australia. Thanks, Christy. That's good feedback. Can't imagine the shipping to Mexico. <laughs> um, have preferred DVDs in the past, but not always available now. Yeah, I think they're fading out here pretty quickly. Uh, gen downloads that can be transferred to DVD. The only problem with, like, as a producer of materials online, the only problem with providing downloads is copyright issues. And I know none of my followers would... Uh, you know, breach copyright and things like that, but there's a, a huge um, industry of con artists, or I don't know what to call them, but um, who will go and buy courses and things and then download them and then re you know, resell them, which, uh, you know, it's a bit of a problem, but not a major issue. The other problem with making the downloads available is being able to store them at a high enough resolution. And that takes up a huge amount of space on a disc. Okay. I think we're getting our field starting to get a feel for that. Getting it, getting it working there. Getting it working. Let's see now. John's saying the, the bad thing in the US art is the tendency towards fads. Well, you know, the great thing about art is that there's room for everyone. But I understand what you're saying. Um, you just got to find those artists that you resonate with, I think is the key. Um, there's certainly plenty of variety out there. Wolfcat, I watched a three-part series on YouTube, The Impressionist. Fantastic, yep. I, actually, I think I've got the DVD of that series. Um, bought some time ago. It is a good series, though. Very good. Reads, please, okay. Give their long green reads with a brown tube at the top. Okay. Thanks, George. We'll see how we go. Um, before we get to that sort of stage, though, we're going to get a little bit of work into... Do our main tree. Now, if we're going to do this as a dust scene, we can't really get too bright on these trees. So this looks pretty murky on the palette here. Let me show you here on the palette. This is what I'm mixing up here. So it's ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson. It looks fairly dark and murky. I'm going to put highlights on the tree up there. So one of the things to do is if I try and see how the, this brush is fairly loaded because I mix with the brush. If I was mixing with a palette knife, maybe different, but because I mix with the brush, it gets fairly clogged up. So it's important before you put highlights and things on, just pull the paint out of the brush, right? So I'm not gonna clean it, but I'm just gonna reduce the amount of pigment in there. And I'm just going to just load the tip. Can you see that? I don't know if it's picking it up, but just, just a lot less paint on the tip is what I'm suggesting. And then on this tree here, let's just, because whatever's on your brush, likely it's going to end up on your painting. Okay. So less pigment for doing this step here. And that then enables me just to soften out those edges, just a little gentle touch. Well, you can see how rough I made that uh, gessoing in of that board there. It's got great big groove, like brush marks through there. <laughs> Probably too much. Maybe need to sand that back a bit. Whoop. See that little big clumpy bit of paint? That's no good. Pull the paint off and then I'll just soften that in. Soften 
So this is just a little bit of light, which will help. I mostly want this tree to be silhouetted, but just that little bit of mid-tone adds some form. this tree and I can just lighten it up lighten it up ever so slightly with a little bit of the cad yellow now because we are using a limited palette we've got a fair bit of color harmony there So the benefits of using a limited palette are that you obviously you create color harmony, but you also are forced to learn how to mix paint and it's a lot cheaper than buying 25 different colors. Ah, I'm on the wrong screen, aren't I? There we go. I was just utilizing that slightly lighter tone there and just on this side here, just, sorry about that. Still just getting used to, I think we're going pretty well with switching the camera, but obviously I can get better. Okay, George, Rod, their long green reeds. Yep, got that. We'll pop some of those in soon. Facebook, can't see the picture here. Yep, sorry about that. No, I don't breach copyrights, but no doubt some do. Yeah, it's, not, it's generally not our fans and people who follow us uh, that breach copyright. It's usually people who um, you know trying to make money out of out of it, so I'm certainly not suggesting any of us would do it, um, but it does happen, so that's why you'll see a lot of artists won't uh, make the downloads available. Okay, I'm going to just switch up that tone. Let me come down to the palette, okay. So I've got this tone here we're using for the grasses. I'll take a little bit of that, just pop it there, and I'm just going to get a little touch of white. Uh, no, it's too much white. No, I might have to mix it. I was hoping to just pinch a bit and use it. However, because I've got to do those background trees there, which I'll show you in a moment, but I need a green that's muted off and is lighter in value. Mm, once again, I've added too much white. Okay. Concentrate, right? Anyway, that's getting a bit more like it. You can see it's fairly muted by comparison with these. It's almost like a gunmetal grey. And uh, it's the intention is to get it grey. Pull that paint out of the brush. Let's go up to the palette here, or the canvas. Just lay the tip. And just a real fine touch is all that's needed here. Right, so limited palette, yeah, color harmony, yeah, it forces you to learn how to mix paint, and it's a lot cheaper. So who wouldn't want those benefits, right? Got a big blotchy area right there, let me get something a little bit radical just to pop up in here just pop it and have a little sort of bush in there just to fill in around that base there but we don't want it to be whoop. I'll show you what I'm doing here. Just mixing up the dark. If you ever paint something in, you think, oh, what did I do that for? Just paint, paint it back out. So I'll just soften what I've done there. Probably should use a smaller brush for that. Just 
soften that in a bit. So there's a little bit of a hint of something. Just, it just minimised the amount of that dark that was there. I've kind of lost this shadow that was hinting in through here as well. So pop that back in. All right, I think we're getting something, aren't we? I'm not sure what, but we're getting something happening. A little bit of dark there. All right. G'day, Martin. Welcome, Megan. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. How's life in Geelong? Hope it's good. I only buy large bottles of red, blue, yellow, black and white. I'm getting better at the colour tone. Good on you, John. That's the idea. George, learning to mix the colours you need is a plus in my opinion. Every artist should know how. I totally agree. I mean, to me, it's a fundamental skill of painting. Um, you know, so that's why we teach to use a limited palette. That doesn't mean you don't expand the palette. Um, I obviously do. Rod, can I send you a pic to maybe do a class on the landscape of a tractor? Yeah, yeah, Missy. I traditionally, um, traditionally, I don't like doing other people's photos um, for a couple of different reasons. Copyright's one of them. Um, I prefer to take my own reference material and uh, and do that. If you send me the photo though, what I might do is a sketch of it as an interpretation and change it up a bit and then I'll maybe have a go at that. So by all means send it through to me, yeah. Um, John, another thing is not to be too hard on yourself as you go. Yep, absolutely. There are no real mistakes, I don't think, when you're learning to paint. I think it's all about um, being prepared to have a go and try different things and um, Everything can be undone. You can paint over everything. So, yeah, uh, and, and sometimes, John, you get a bit too close to what it is that you're doing. So sometimes you do need to have um, perspective, you know, to step back. And also, like, you know, I'm standing here and I'm a metre away from uh, the board, right? So sometimes you're just physically too close. So sometimes what I'll do is walk around to the back, which you guys can't see, but I'm now back, you know, four metres, and you get a completely different view of what it is that you look, you're doing with your work. So definitely standing back if you've got the space um, is pretty important, I think. Okay, let me just get a little bit more pink in here. Wow, that's drying quick. Let's just strengthen up that pink and... Bit more of that yellow as well, hey? Man alive. We're heading into winter, so um, that's a happy, happy thing for me as far as painting goes. But still, if you spend too much time talking, this paint dries off real quick. So, I don't know what you guys have all got on for the rest of the day. I'm going to be... Um, Filming this afternoon, uh, another project for those who've joined us for the um, loose, bold and expressive workshop. So you can expect if you're in that workshop, then um, you can expect the, DVD, uh, the videos of that to come out the next day or two. Cool bananas. Online is so much better. Yeah, I agree, to Lisa. Okay, where are we up to? What are winters like in Australia? Well, John, I spent most of uh, my adult, well, most of my life, really, let me find my cup of tea, spent most of my life uh, living in Melbourne, which is the southern part of Australia. And uh, it gets pretty cold, but not as cold as other places in the world, like I've seen snow one time in my life falling out of the sky. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it gets rainy and windy, but no snow, really, where most of Melbourne. We do have an alpine region in the country, Victoria, but, um, you know, you go there for a holiday if you like snow, which 
I was always a beach person. So, but where I live in Queensland now, winter is going to be you know 22 degrees Celsius, um, and usually blue skies. So winter is one of the best times up here. Over summer, it's 34 degrees and hugely humid. No fun. <laughs> so um, yeah, I love the wind. Autumn through to spring here in the Sunshine Coast is just sensational. Okay, where are we up to, folks? I think it's looking okay. I'm liking where it's going. It's a nice little uh, country scene, which I like. And it's got a nice feel to it with those different pastel colours in the sky and the water. I think it's working. So, um, I'm going to have to research the reeds that you're all talking about. <laughs> 22 degrees is a heat wave in the UK. Yes, it is. I'll never forget um, Wolf, Wolf Cat. Yeah. Um, the first time I went to the UK, my wife's English. So um, we weren't together long and we went to the UK. It was my first time out of Australia. And uh, we landed at Heathrow, got in a taxi, and the radio was on. The DJ goes, Oh my God, it's going to be a scorcher today. It's going to be 16 degrees. And, and, uh, I couldn't stop laughing, you know, like to me that was like a, a freaking cold day. <laughs> it's all relative though, I guess. Okay, we are going to do some reedy type things here, I believe. Um, but I do think I probably need to do a bit of research on how to do these. But I suspect because we've got a um, light tone in the water there, that we'd start off with a dark, something like that. But I think I might research that and maybe we'll include that into another painting. Because um, I don't feel that confident about doing something that I can't actually picture in my head. Okay. Although having said that, you know, this whole painting is something I haven't pictured in my head. Um, just in the interest of keeping that colour harmony going, let's see if this brown will... That should, you know, tie it in with... With the embankment there, that muddy embankment. That last bit was a bit much. So if I make a little mistake like that, not a problem. I'll just come back to my dark and then we'll just, just tone back any bits that, whoop, water in the brush. Um, any bits that are a bit too overdone, we'll just tone them back. That's no problem. Can even pick up a bit of that green. A little bit of a tree. Cattail, yeah. You kind of got the reeds on the bottom right of the pond. You mean I kind of got them right? I'm not sure. Uh, Misty, it's a long stem with a short hot dog, <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure that we're, this painting's probably a bit too small to put too much detail in. George, 100 degrees during our summers here in California, sometimes hotter, yeah, that's pretty hot. Um, we have tons of cattails in my area. Or well, maybe snap off a photo and uh, send me through a cattail photo and we'll incorporate that into another live stream soon. G'day Miriam, hope you're well, hope you're well. Janet, 
prefers DVD. Lynn, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, anybody that's got cattails, um, then snap off a photo and uh, maybe we could even do a third session on the, whoop, third session, come on, work, concentrate on this and uh, look at little finishing details. The only thing is I'd have, I might have to be sitting down for that. So we might have to just rearrange things a little bit. See what happens when I talk and don't concentrate so much. Do careless things. Just going to put in some little flowers on the hillside here. I'm just using pretty much straight cadmium yellow for that. Turn down that shadow just ever so slightly. I'll just run a little bit of light out the back here. Not too much. Don't think we need to do anything to the mountain. I'm happy with that. Uh, what well, maybe we do need to do is it? Maybe a touch too light. Maybe. If it is, we'll just come back in and soften it out. All right, I think we're getting close here now to popping the moon in. through there. Popping the moon in. Now the idea with the moon is to put it somewhere good.
Okay, sorry about that folks. Still having a problem with my sound system here and um, the solution is coming today um, by courier. Hopefully we'll have that sorted out for the next one. So I do apologize for that. Okay, Julie Chabwick, welcome. So hopefully sounds back on and you're all good, you can hear me. So what I was saying, probably talking to myself was um, for our prize giveaway, the question is, what are the three reasons for using a limited palette? I've mentioned them several times um, in our um, stream here today. I've mentioned the three reasons for using a limited palette. Somebody on Facebook is going to win the art bag. First person I'll see with the correct answer. Whoop, bugger. Uh, so somebody on Facebook is going to win the art bag. Now, if you've already won a prize, then you can only win one prize, sorry. <laughs> Somebody on YouTube is gonna win the limited edition mouse mat. So the question is, what are the three advantages or the three reasons for using a limited palette? I'm gonna let you answer. The first person I'll see that answers is going to win. While we let you do that, we are going to, we are going to, so I put in a couple of little tree uh, indications of tree trunks and things in there, very subtle. Um, but I think it works. Now, we're going to take white for our moon. I'm going to put it there. I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a good idea to just put white in. Uh, I'm going to make it come right through there, so therefore it needs to go there, right? But I want to just tone that back with a little bit of this yellow here. Using a small little brush, like so. Where are we? There we go. Little small brush, little, little flat small brush. And I am just going to, um, just an indication, but I've, I've got to put this whitey yellow against the darker part of the sky there. Now this is pretty small and I badly need glasses because <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing when it comes down to that small. Um, but I think that works. So it's three advantages. You need to answer all three in your answer. Um, I've mentioned them several times in our broadcast here today. Three advantages. Hopefully somebody will get all three on both Facebook and YouTube. And if you if you tuned in on uh, Periscope or Twitch, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we will do giveaways on Periscope and Twitch once the audience builds up a bit. Um, so tell all your friends who use Periscope and Twitch to tune in. Okay, and then we will do a giveaways for you guys as well. But I appreciate you all, uh, you all watching. It's maybe a little heavy. But you know what? It doesn't matter because we just, well, that's dirty. I can just tone it back by adding a bit more color in there. So if I feel like I've got it, I have to start bringing my glasses to these uh, live streams. I do like dusky scenes with moonlights. If you can get them just right, they um, have a real magic feel to them. I think we've gone part of the way to achieving that here today. Not all the way, but certainly part of the way. Come back to my little brush. I think it might be a good time to wind this uh, live stream up. I don't know if you can hear, but uh, the council are mowing the reserve that I live next to, and um, it's getting louder and louder, getting closer and closer. Okay. Who's won? Don't, 
don't have comp, use phone. Okay. Learn to mix colors. You've got one of the answers right there, Janet. Three keys or three reasons to use a limited palette. Okay. It was my sound system. I've been having problems with audio, which um, I'm working on fixing. Uh, Wolfcat says mixing color and tones. They're good reasons, but they're not the three that I mentioned, right? So you've got one of them uh, is that you learn to color mix. You learn to color mix. Um, Barbara says, it's looking very nice. Thanks, John. Barbara says cost, convenience, knowledge. Just guessing. <laughs> uh, you've got one of them, cost. So we've got learning to mix and cost are two of the three that I mentioned. No, oh, you're so close, Wolfcat. Not quite. Not quite. Uh, Gladys, yeah. So we just need somebody to put all three together. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Appreciate that. It's been a bit of fun painting. Um, something a little bit different and completely made up. And um, you can uh, make up an unlimited number of painting subjects with a bit of imagination. Too much paint on my brush. Although, you know, Julie, you might appreciate this. Um, it could easily be out the back of Kenilworth uh, or even Mullaney, some of those rolling hills and farms out near Mullaney. Could easily be out there. All right, we'll give you all another couple of minutes. If we don't have a winner, I'll have to roll it over to next week. So just a reminder, we won't have any more live streams this week. Um, with Easter coming up and I've got a uh, show, an exhibition. So if you're on the Sunshine Coast, I don't know if anyone's tuned in from the Sunshine Coast besides Julie, um, come on down to Coolum. We've got a fabulous exhibition there uh, this weekend. Julie and I will both be exhibiting there and uh, you're more than welcome to come and check out local artists from the Sunshine Coast. So therefore, we won't be doing any more lives this week, but we will resume after Easter. Soften that out a little bit. Um, yeah, we'll resume after Easter. Nan, you're so close. Jen's got one of them right. <laughs> okay, it's 10 o'clock, it's, uh, it's the end of the hour. So unfortunately, nobody on Facebook's won. And cost, learning to mix. Wolfcat, you've got it. Over on YouTube, you've won a limited edition mouse mat. Right here. So I'm going to send that to you. Well done, Wolfcat. <laughs> so the three things that I mentioned, I mentioned about three or four times throughout the broadcast were... You learn how to mix color with a limited palette. It saves you a ton of money, but also you end up with a nice color harmony. I mean, we've used basically three colors and then a little bit of cadmium yellow we've used. And you know, there's a harmony to it. That's um, if you have 25 different colors up there, then it's challenging, you know? So Wolfcat, well done. Now here's what you need to do, Wolfcat, is you need to go to our Learn to Paint um, Academy Facebook page, like the page, and then message me through there with your details, right? And just remind me, you've won the mouse mat um, on YouTube from the live stream, so I, I know who, who you are, uh, because no doubt you, you, the postal name's not gonna be Wolfcat. <laughs> um, you, don't use, you don't want the mouse mat, that's okay. Um, but if you do want it, then just message me through and um, with your postal address, maybe you've got a grandkids or something you can give it to. So um, thank you all so much for joining me. I think we've... Uh, We've moved this one along. I think it's one of those paintings that I would let sit for a while. I don't think it's finished. Um, I'd let it sit for maybe a month, two months, three months. Uh, 
and um, I would uh, maybe revisit it a little bit like the one we did on the Learn to Paint TV. You know, we did this one here on Learn to Paint TV this week. That needs you know a little bit more work as well. So um, I like where it's going though. I like the direction it's going in. It's got a nice peaceful feel and uh, it has potential, you know. You could easily turn that into a larger painting um, without any problems. Um, let me have a look. John, would you show some of your more advanced work sometimes? John, with these live streams, um, I'm going to keep them pretty much basic beginner level for the reason I want to interact and it's pretty hard to do more advanced paintings if your brain's sort of interacting and then trying to switch. So it is a bit challenging. We do have courses where um, we're doing one at the moment which is loose, bold and expressive. So for anybody that's interested in that, um, just go to Learn to Paint. I've just put it on the screen there. It's www.learntopaint.online forward slash loose. That'll give you all the details. Um, the early bird registration is open right now so you can save money on it. And that's more advanced. It's for people who've been painting for a while who want to get looser and more expressive. And um, I'll show you some of my work. Hang on a sec. Let me... This is one of the demos from there, which is a moody sort of um, big brush and, and really painting from your intuition. So that's the sort of painting projects we're doing there. And it's designed for more advanced or people who have been painting for a while um, because uh, I don't do as much talking in there, as much explanation. So I assume you already know the basics of how to mix color. So just go to that address and you can get that one. What I am going to do is uh, in about a few weeks, I'm going to launch a new course which will be really advanced where each month I'm going to do a complete painting project, a bigger painting project, and, um, and really slow down the process and you know, maybe spend three or four hours doing one painting and, and demonstrating it into a lot more detail. And that'll be for advanced um, people who've been painting, you know, obviously for a while. If you are brand new though, uh, make sure you go and register for the free course, which is on the screen now, www.learntopaint.info. And you can register for a free course. There's about four different demos there. You learn more about the more method of painting and um, it's a good thing. So Gladys says she signed up for the Insanity Sale. Thank you, Gladys. So hopefully you've got all your login details and you're all good to go there. Uh, not paint. Oh, just show a few. Um, I can show a few now if you want, if you make sure paint's dry on my hands. Just give me one second. I've just been putting together paintings for the exhibition this weekend. So I'll just go and grab a couple of those. Give me two seconds. So for those who are interested, um, we've got the exhibition on the Sunshine Coast here this weekend. So this is one of the paintings that I'm putting in there. It's done plain air. This is the Umundi Gums. So hang on, let me get rid of the, that. This is the Umundi Gums. So I did this plain air and um, the light coming through the gum trees there was just beautiful and it was catching on the, the grass here. So uh, that's one of the ones I'll have in the exhibition this weekend. Pop that out of the way. I don't normally like bringing finished paintings back in here for obvious reasons. So this one is quite a loose, almost semi-abstract. Not a very good, um, the lights here are bouncing off it obviously. So um, that's a, a fun, one of my favourite paintings that I've done. Uh, that was in the Noosa Gallery recently, an exhibition they had. And this one's far looser than, uh, this is the Mary River in Kennelsworth. And as you can see, have a look at the big brush marks and things in there. I got a little bit loose and wild with that. I kind of like that sort of free, sort of semi-abstracty feel and very loose. So that's another example. And there's a little bit more of a sort of traditional landscape scene. I'll get the angle right. There we go. Uh, now, this one, some of you will recognise. I did this one as a Learn to Paint TV episode. It was smaller. 
Um, not as finished, but same subject, right? I hiked up the side of a mountain, um, collecting reference material. Actually, I had all my plain air stuff with me and <laughs> trying to do a painting after climbing up the side of a mountain, that was challenging. Um, yeah, but that's more of a traditional sort of landscape scene. So that's a little bit of an example of some of my more finished, more advanced work. I hope that's what you meant, John. Um, I think it is, yeah. So anyway, thank you all so much for joining me and uh, we'll see you after Easter. So check out um, Facebook. I'll post up all the details there for our streams resuming after Easter. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Hope you've enjoyed our little uh, moonlit dam in the country there. I've enjoyed doing it, but I think probably needs another go. It might even be a painting that we pull out in a month or two's time on one of the live streams and just look at how do we finish off this painting and how do we get some details in and things like that. In order to do so, I might have to rearrange so I'm sitting down and I can steady my arm and use my glasses to do the details. Um, but we can work on that. Happy Easter, everyone. Hope you have a great time. Um, I'm going to enjoy going to our exhibition in Coolum over the Easter break and uh, look forward to chatting with you all after Easter. Cheers for now.